All right, we have a uh, combined Honor Guard, Thornton, and Greeley Police Departments to present colors. Detail, forward, arch. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, very good. All right. Well, first of all, thank you all for coming to the uh, fall graduation of the 2022 full-time police academy. So, congratulations to our graduates. I'd like to thank the uh, sponsoring agencies for our cadets: Federal Heights, Greeley, Johnstown, Lafayette, Thornton, and Windsor. Also our advisory committee members, which we would not be in play without our advisory committee. Those agencies are Greeley, Lock Bowie, Louisville, Loveland, Weld County, and Windsor. And I would also like to recognize our instructors in the room and trainers. So if you are, if you have taught in the academy, would you please stand and be recognized? All right, I'd also like to thank our local chiefs, commanders, supervisors, officers, and current and former military and current and former law enforcement. So thank you all for your service. <laughs> I'd also like to take, uh, take a second to uh, thank Flat Rock, Adams County Sheriff's Office, and Post Board, because without them, we, we also wouldn't be in play. So um, thank you all for your involvement with them. And I'd also like to thank uh, Mary Ames Administration and Randy Souther, which I did see him walk in the room. Randy, where are you at? There you go. So after 35 years of service to Ames, um, Randy was actually instrumental in actually building our fire academy program. Uh, he also was the reason that we had a wildland academy uh, here at Ames. Um, he's also the state representative for all the fire emergency management and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so he's responsible for all the curriculum that comes in. He's worked on this stuff for the last 35 years. He was also the vision behind this particular campus and our Sim City that's going in. So uh, Randy leaves us in about a month and a half um, to actually do some fun things and not have to deal with uh, all the fun things that are involved in the curriculum. So Randy, thank you very much for all your service. And last but not least, uh, the, none of this graduation would have happened without Brian, which now I literally just lost him. Where are you at, Brian? Oh yeah, hey, Brian Mix. So um, yeah, so Brian's actually only been with the Academy for two months and everything that you see today and the entire program is because of him. So um, talk about hitting the, hitting the ground running. He did an outstanding job. So he also is a chef on the side. So he chopped up all the vegetables. We found out this morning that he's a, a semi-professional singer um, so, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a jack of all trades and he used to be with the DEA. How do we steal him from them? So, well, he retired first. So, yeah. So thank you, Brian. Congratulations. All right. Um, I also would like to recognize, uh, the two fallen officers from 2002, um, Arvada police officer, Dylan Rakoff and, uh, El Paso Sheriff's deputy, Andrew Perry. So, um, this is why we do this. It's not a lot of, it's not because we have so many officers leaving the job, but there's always officers that are required to go through the door when the citizens don't want to. Um, society can say a lot of things about law enforcement these days, which is unfortunate. Bottom line is, th these are the ones that you guys call at two in the morning when you hear something in your basement or in your garage and you don't wanna go deal with it. 
or these are the ones that you call when you are shopping and something bad happens. These ones that are standing in back and throughout the audience, um, thank you all for all, all the service that you do, the, the dedication. The job is very thankless. Um, it's a very violent job at times. And these people wake up every single day and go to work. And that's what all 21 of our cadets are gonna be doing as well. So thank you all for your hard work and dedication. All right, and he's gonna uh, be up later, so actually I'll, I'll read some, some things happened today uh, for Clay that I'll, I'll read when he comes up later. But right now, um, I would like to uh, bring up our keynote speaker, uh, Mayor John Gates. He was actually, um, he went through this academy just before I did, um, and I won't say how long I went through the academy 30 years ago, but uh, he was actually my hiring sergeant at Greeley, um, so he was probably the biggest mistake of his career um, was bringing me on, but, um, and then after, uh, let's see, 26 years at Greeley, right? Um, then he went to District 6 as the head of security, um, head, of, head of safety for all of District 6, Greeley and uh, Evans schools, and then became mayor of Greeley in 2007 and still to this day um, does this. And it's a, it's a great honor. It's, uh, uh, mayor Gates is somebody I've looked up to my entire career. Um, he's a really nice guy. Um, at, oddly enough, my wife used to work in the district, and so she and Mayor Gates have known each other for a long time, so he's just a stand-up guy. He's involved in everything, and it's a tremendous honor for us to be able to have Mayor Gates speak today, so. Thank you, Jeff, and to graduates, families, academy staff, and distinguished guests, good afternoon. I'm honored to have been invited to stand before you on this very special day for you. For those of you that are worried, as many of you probably are, that Jeff just handed a microphone to an elected official, I promise to be brief. So to, to Jeff's point, this is somewhat of a deja vu moment for me. Um, he didn't know when, but I do. Um, 44 years ago, in December of 1978, I graduated from the Ames Community College Police Academy and went on to serve for 25 plus years with the Greeley Police Department. I sincerely hope that all of your careers in law enforcement will be as rewarding as mine was. I want to thank each and every one of you for your sacrifice and service as you answer the call to undertake the honorable and noble path of law enforcement. This includes you all as graduates, your instructors, and your families who have sacrificed much along with you to this point. Above all, it is important that you serve your respective communities with a great morals and integrity. You will soon have a great deal of authority and responsibility, and I encourage you all to be very careful in how you deal with that. You're going to be challenged, you're going to be tempted, and you're going to find yourself in very difficult situations. Your training will help you through this and as simplistic as it sounds, do the right thing. I encourage you all to be compassionate and caring. I know from experience that your training has been intense and arduous, but likely of high caliber. You've been pushed mentally and physically, and you've likely been challenged to the extent of your limits. You all have the opportunity to make a positive impact on people's lives. Duty compels us to defend and advance the profession of policing. We must continue to evolve, continue to hold, and raise standards. The best defense against the vocal minority who continue to spew anti-law enforcement rhetoric is to embrace accountability by policing ourselves. As law enforcement executives struggle with recruiting and retention, it might be tempting to lower standards or overlook problem police officers. As such, it is a responsibility of each law enforcement executive to serve as gatekeepers. These are tough times that we find ourselves in. It's a troubling trend when the number of individuals who want to be police officers has diminished so much. Many years ago, when I was responsible for facilitating the hiring of police officers at Greeley Police Department, uh, when I was a sergeant, I would have to rent a lecture hall at UNC to accommodate the large number of police applicants for a written exam. Sadly, that is no longer the case. So thank you all for wanting to take this task on. 
For the small percentage of law enforcement officers who have tarnished our profession, you will not get us down. To the politicians and legislators out there who have enacted legislation to hinder us so severely that's caused a mass exodus from our profession, you will not get us down. To the politicians and activists who railed on the concept of defunding the police, not only will you also not get us down, you have undoubtedly figured out by now how incredibly stupid of an idea that was. To those I'm referring to, stay in your lane and let our law enforcement officers do their job in making our community safe. You must remember to never become complacent. As things become routine, our complacency can become a danger to you and others. You will always be there for one another and you will always have each other's backs. To the families of today's graduates in attendance, thank you for supporting these men and women as they enter this profession. Thank you for understanding when they work unconventional shifts, unconventional hours, nights, and weekends. I can tell you from experience that a strong family support network is essential to alleviate a lot of stress at home. Law enforcement officers will continue to face difficult challenges, both individually and collectively. You will make our community safe and you will be shining examples of professionalism. As you move on to represent your respective communities, always give your best. I know you will greet these challenges with courage, hard work, and you will demonstrate integrity in all that you do. Thank you for your willingness to enter this profession. I wish you a long and healthy career. Congratulations to each and every one of you. May God bless you and keep you safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, next up we have uh, Clay Fuller to give a presentation, kind of an overview of the academy. Although before Clay comes up, um, we have a thing at the college called ripples and recognition. And essentially the, the theory behind it is when somebody does something good, it's like you throw a pebble into a lake and by the time it reaches the shore, it's a big wave. And so that's kind of the, the thought process behind our ripples. Students can put people in for it, uh, instructors, um, and we actually rarely does the police academy or any of the academies, rarely are they recognized for their work. And Clay actually had two ripples this semester um, by, by uh, two of our students, Court Tapia and uh, Kevin Reiser. And just a couple comments out of both of those ripples is the great leader, the wonderful teacher, how Clay constantly bends over backwards. He's always available, takes extra time. He doesn't give the students the answers. He actually allows them to process through it. Um, Clay is a tremendous asset to the academy. He was a uh, Cheyenne and, and Laramie uh, Wyoming officer for a long time, and then he ran the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center down in New Mexico for a number of years. So um, if you ever want a, a guy to shoot with, he's taken multiple academy students um, out to our range to practice. The, the guy is just a tremendous asset. Um, we don't hold him against him because he drives a bug, um, because he also has a Jeep, so that's okay. So Clay, you want to come up and... It's not a bug, it's a beetle. <laughs> I'd like to thank the families. You already knew what great people you had and were sending to us, and we got to meet them. All these students chose to do a hard and difficult job at probably one of the most difficult times in our nation's history to do that job. I respect every one of them just for that. They've worked hard to get where they are. No one handed them anything. They've handled about twice as many college credit hours in one semester as most any other student going to college has. And physical fitness and traveling 
long distance in time down to Flat Rock. And Flat Rock was not a kind and gentle place because it was a hard class. And they all did well. Every day in class, I'm more happy to know these people. It's an honor. They're now serving all of you out there. They're joining the ranks of all of you who are still wearing badges and protecting us, protecting my family. I'm so honored to know and proud to know each and every one of you and that if my family calls for help, I'm, I'm glad that you will be answering that. And what I would like to remind you is you are now going to the funnest, most important part of your training, FTO, and you're gonna love it and hate it, but you will learn so much. It's great. Things are just getting better from here. So have fun and thank you. Thank you for just volunteering to do the hard job that other people are not. I appreciate it. All right, we also apologize that we don't have this in the program. We had a last minute addition after um, we sent these, the, the uh, uh, graduations to the printer, um, but we have two class sergeants, um, Madison, if you wanna stand up and be recognized, and Court Tapia, Madison Goss. So thank you guys for all that you've done for the class. <laughs> and from what I understand, uh, Court's got a speech that he wanted to address the uh, audience with. Is that not, not accurate? Okay. I, that's what I was told. Okay, fine. You guys can sit down. So you're welcome. All right. So um, we have uh, some coins that we want to give out. Um, the, the coining ceremony actually goes back pretty, pretty far in existence. From my understanding, uh, and I'm probably wrong, but Clay will correct me because um, he enjoys that, um, is uh, there was an um, Air Force pilot that was shot down and behind enemy lines. And while he was able to work his way back to... Um, some alliances, they were, he didn't have any identification on him. And so one of, the, one of the allies actually gave him a coin and that allowed him to get back. Where this goes in military and law enforcement is um, the coins are actually pretty valuable, um, especially if you're ever caught outside where there might be uh, something more than water and pop to, to drink, um, that if you don't have your coin on you and you're challenged, which is why it's called a challenge coin, then you get to buy drinks for everybody that's there. The flip side of this is if you have your coin and you're challenged, the person who challenged you has to pick up the drinks. So there's some fun with it, and then there's also some really cool coins out there that people collect. So, um, and I know people that have coins from mil their military service that are in the hundreds because of the different units that they've done. But we're gonna start out by calling everybody up individually uh, for their coins, and then we will uh, continue on with the gifts. So. Juan, Ariana Ramirez. Congratulations. Thank you. Michaela Bauer. Kaylee Brazel. Thank you. Ryan Brown. Isaiah Bastillos. Madison Goss. Alyssa Hewell. Congratulations. 
Noah Jordan. Maria Juan Mateo. Luther Mares. Adam Miller. Kennedy Miller. Juan Monreal. Sam Munholen. Kevin Reiser. Kevin Sanchez. Grant Shade. Court Tapia. Elizabeth Tolbert. Thang Fong Vu. And Diane Yelvington. All right, now we're going to get on to the thing that's been uh, relatively contested. Um, but we've got a number of awards that we give out to the, to the uh, specific individuals who score the highest or outperform everyone else. Arrest control, we do uh, pressure point control tactics. Um, so as a recommendation to family, if you are a significant other, um, sorry if uh, you received some extra bruises during the academy, that's really Clay's fault because um, I would never recommend that they practice outside of uh, the academy. But uh, the pressure point control system is a, it's a very specific uh, arrest control tactic. It's very effective. Um, there's some other ones out there, um, but we had a couple people that really kind of accelerated in this. And so our top arrest control cadet for this academy is Madison Goss. And there's a, a rumor that cops are horrible drivers. Um, I actually think that we're really good drivers, whether you were current or already. Um, you can ask my wife. I'm, I'm positive I drive better than her. Uh, she won't say that, I'm sure. But 
there's the, the level of driving that we teach these cadets out at Flat Rock is, is, is to be honest, it's ridiculous. Um, they do 80 mile an hour high speed lane changes. They do some backward stuff. They, uh, they kill a whole bunch of cones, um, all sorts of stuff. And then they're timed on this track. So they have to go into a skills pad and then jump onto a high speed racetrack. Um, and the individual that finished this, um, to put in perspective, the instructors that teach out there, they run the entire course in about, say, three and a half minutes. This individual missed the three and a half minute mark, but was under the four minute mark. And the majority of the cadets finish in, in that four to five minute mark on the entire track. So um, she's a ridiculous driver. I'm glad I live in Windsor because that's where she's going. So uh, it'll be some interesting racing. Um, no, I'm sorry, Greeley. Um, but our top driver is Michaela Bauer. And then the Top Gun Award, um, even more strict standards. Um, they are, so they do a bunch of different types of shooting at Flat Rock. They do dim light shooting. They, uh, the, the actual exam itself, they have to do reloads. They have to do uh, shoot single-handed. They have to do uh, single-handed with a flashlight. They have to shoot while they're moving forward. They have to shoot while they're going backwards. They have to shoot while they're trying to arrest somebody. And they have to do all these while hitting all of their rounds on the target. And if they don't get all their rounds on the target, they don't pass. So um, we had uh, a number of students do amazing during this, but our top shot for the academy is Kevin Reiser. <clears throat> Actually, don't go too far. I'm serious. Might as well just hang out for a minute. So um, the next award is academic achievement. So we have about 1,700 points throughout the entire academy. Um, in the history of the academy, we always have a lot of students like me that barely passed in the C's. Um, and then we've got some B's and we have a few A's. The lowest grade in this entire academy was an 87%. The highest grade is a 96%. Out of 1,700 points, and that individual is also, again, Kevin Reiser. Congratulations. <laughs> and finally, we have an award um, that's the director's award. It's actually not voted on by me. I have some input, but we actually send it out to all the instructors um, to get their opinion on the individual that always had a positive attitude, um, always put in the effort, always put in extra effort, um, was, was always just kind of the model and kept everybody else encouraged. Um, and so this, this award's actually a really big deal to me because it's, it's, it's our opportunity to recognize just outstanding achievement across the board. So you don't have to be the top shot or the top driver. Um, you just have to be the best consistently and just have that amazing positive attitude. So. Um, Diane Yelvington. Yeah. All right, now what they really care about is getting their certificates so they can turn them into their chiefs and hit the street. So um, we are going to now give out certificates inside the, your certificate packet is your class photo um, with everybody's name spelled correctly, finally. Um, sorry about that. And uh, then all of your certificates for your arrest control, firearms, driving, your TCC, your SFST certificate, and your completion certificate. So, and those have all already been uploaded to post. They were very excited for you guys. Um, I, I also wanna say a couple apologies. So um, there are a number of instructors at Flat Rock that were not able to come out today. Um, there was a uh, post, uh, actually gave the post exam at another school today, so our compliance officer wasn't able to come out. And I know Chief Klemek and Chief Turk with Greeley and Windsor, they have uh, two of their commanders are graduating from the FBI's National Academy, and so they're actually out on the East Coast 
seeing that graduation. So that um, all of those people apologize for not being able to be here today, um, but they were all very excited for you guys. So um, we're gonna call everybody up individually and give you guys your certificates and a gift, and then we will be done. So, and I was trying to get underneath 30 minutes, so I'm pretty close to that. So, all right, Juan Ariano Ramirez. Thank you. All right, Michaela Bauer. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Kaylee Brazel. Oh, sorry. sorry. I was trying to be better. Sorry. Thank you. Ryan Brown. Isaiah Bastillos. Madison Goss. Alyssa Hewell. Thank you, sir. Noah Jordan. Maria Juan Mateo. Luther Mares. Adam Miller. Kennedy Miller. Juan Monreal. Congratulations. And Juan had a baby during the academy too, so that's even more of a feat, so congratulations. <laughs> Sam Munholland. Kevin Reiser. Kevin Sanchez. Grant Shade. That's my brother. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Court Tapia. To tell you how small Northern Colorado is, if you've been here for any length of time, you know that. A couple of the instructors that were in my academy class are here today, and I remember Court when he was six years old because he was a McAuliffe kid, and so were my kids. So they all grew up together and played soccer, and so it's been cool to watch him as, in fact, when I was told from Windsor that 
he was a, he was going to be one of their cadets at the academy. I was like, Court Tappy wants to be a cop. Are you kidding me? So I've worked with his dad for years in the school district. So it's cool to see things happen like this. I know that makes me really old, but it's still it's fun. So, all right, sorry I digress. Elizabeth Tolbert. Thank Fong Vu. <laughs> All right, and finally, Diane Yelvington. So that concludes everything. I want to thank everybody for coming out. We've got cake. We've got a lot of vegetables from our secret chef, Brian Mix. Um, a lot of water and tea. Uh, you guys can stay as long as you want. We've got the campus until probably midnight when security kicks us out. But um, you guys can stay, do pictures, um, mingle, meet all the bosses that showed up today. So thank you guys all for coming. Um, we expect to see the cadets back to help us teach um, because we like to see we have we have a constant flow of instructors that come into the academy um, and we like to see once they're out of FTO they get into specialty units and then they come back and teach for us which is a lot of fun so it's kind of a way to continue the academy and the traditions and as you can see from Mayor Gates and myself and other people Ames, is, Ames has got a big impact in their police academy we've got cadets all over at all agencies um, and it's a lot of fun to see the new breed of students coming through to become cops. So thank you all for showing up. Thank you for your support of, your, of our cadets and of your, of your family. Um, and you guys all have a wonderful weekend.